Welcome back, welcome back. Sampling, right at the heart of everything we do in research. It's the way we find out about the world by just looking at our data. Pretty tricky, eh? Well, let's play around with sampling. Here I've got the population again of, let's say, um, pain ratings with a mean of 50, a standard deviation of 20, and that's a, let's assume, an infinite normal population. And so here, approaching an infinite number of dots. I'm going to take a sample because my life is not long enough to get pain ratings from everybody. I'm going to take a sample, say, of 20 people, and it'll be a random sample from this population. Wait for it, here it comes, there it is. 20 little blue dots being my 20 uh, people. Oh, and one happened to get one from this right-hand tail in my sample. If I did it again, I'd get a different sample. Look, these happen to be much more spread out, a few more on the left. Do it again, and I get a different pattern. And this is one of the really key lessons, the key understandings we have to have in mind all the time. Our data, fine, but it easily could have been different, maybe quite different. So we always have to bear in mind that when we draw a picture of our data, we easily could have got something different. OK, let's take a sample and let's turn on its mean, the little green dot there. In fact, this time, our sample is given a mean of about 52 and a standard deviation of 21, which we calculate from our 20 points, pretty close to the 50 and the 20 in the population. Let's do it again. We have a different sample. This time we happen to get a slightly higher mean, about 57, and a small standard deviation. They just happen, by random sampling, to be bunched up a bit. OK, let's take another one. And now we're going to take successive samples. And each time I'm going to drop down the means of the previous samples. And then I'm going to run those. And that is the dance of the means. You can imagine whatever music you like for this. Turn it on at parties and play, you know, doof, 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 or dance of the sugar plum fairy, whatever you like. The dance of the means. And that's illustrating via simulation just the extent of the sampling uncertainty, the extent of the sampling variability from sample to sample if we take samples of size 20. OK, a question for you. Suppose we took samples of size, say, 80 instead of 20. Would this dance be quite as frenetic? Or would these means vary less? Let's try it. The great thing about a uh, simulation is that we can um, play around with values. I'm putting the sample size there up to 80, and now I'm going to take some samples. And each sample, of course, is much bigger. I've got 80 points there instead of 20, and these means are much less variable. They jump around less from side to side. It's a less frenetic dance. And that's, of course, why we take big samples. More time, effort, and money, but we get an estimate, we get a sample mean that is probably closer to the population mean. And that's one of the fundamental ideas in uh, all research statistics. We have in mind a population out there in the world. We can never examine the whole population. It's just there conceptually. We take a single sample from that population. We calculate the sample mean, and we use that sample mean as our estimate of the population mean. We don't really care about our sample, those particular 80 people. Oh, of course we care for them deeply, but I mean, from a research point of view, we want to estimate the mean of the whole population. And what's the best estimate we can get? It is the mean of our sample. So although in the computer we can play around with the population on the screen and lots and lots and lots of samples on the screen, in real life, as researchers, we don't know the population and we only have a single sample. And so all we have are our data points and the calculated mean. And, on, and we have to bring to mind there is some conceptually Conceptually, in theory, there's some population underlying this. We just don't know much about it. And 
conceptually, if we had a long lifetime and lots of uh, money, we could run lots and lots of samples and look at the dance and the mean. Uh, but in practice, we only have a single one. So always bear that in mind when we're playing around in the computer. Now I'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to uh, take... No, I think I'll go back and do it with sample size 20 again. There we go at... And I'll take Dance of the Means, very frenetic again. Now I'm going to pile up all those means into a distribution. And that is the mean heap. All I've done is simply collapse the dance of the means down into a pile. Another quite nice shape, isn't it? Bunched more tightly together than the population is. I'm going to put a, um, uh, a curve on that, this nice smooth bell-shaped curve, which is actually called the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Another beautiful curve, and in fact it turns out to be a normal distribution. If I had larger samples, this normal distribution would be narrower or wider? It would be narrower, taller and narrower, wouldn't it? Because my dance of the means would be less frenetic, all the means would be more tightly bunched either side of the population mean. Now, a bit of statistical magic. The central limit theorem. Sounds scary, doesn't it? And yes, it's one of the most famous and fundamental mathematical things in all of statistics. But what it means is, in practice, that this beautiful sampling distribution of the sample mean, the pile we get, the mean heap we get when we pile up a whole lot of sample means, turns out to have a normal distribution pretty closely almost whatever the shape of the population. I'm sorry I can't simulate that here, but even if our population was some weird sort of triangular thing or highly skewed or even had two humps, if we took samples of a decent size, you know, 20, 40, 50, then we would get a sampling distribution that is approximately normal. That's a bit of magic. It means that the normal distribution is sort of out there in nature. It exists out in the ether and we just have to run a whole lot of samples of just about anything and we get a normal distribution. And that, of course, is another reason why we use the normal distribution a lot in statistics. And so it's not only a beautiful curve that uh, very often summarises our data, but it's also right at the heart of the nature of the universe. Now. Uh, let me finish off with this one slide. The software I've been using is um, ESCII, Exploratory Software for Confidence Intervals. It's a free download. Please grab it and do some experimenting with larger samples, smaller samples, and so on. You can download it from this website, thenewstatistics.com, and there are other goodies as well. Perhaps I can mention my book. I'll probably mention it a few times along, which sort of gives a few clues or a bit further discussion about all sorts, uh, all these sorts of good things.